Something I love about comics is that there's always something to learn about different characters the more you keep reading. For instance, The Thing. And I know it might be annoying to watch another Thing video, but The Thing is a part of my list of hyperfixations. I can't help it. He's, after all, a big orange rock dude, so what's not to love? Anyways, what I learned about The Thing recently was that The Thing almost had the ability to turn his rocky shell off and on like the other members of the FF. But because Ben Grimm always went under constant stress because of his appearance, it made it so his powers could never fully turn off, trapping him in his rocky form basically forever. Which would lead to a disturbing consequence I'll explain in a short bit. Because in issue 580 of the FF, Valeria, Franklin, and the other students of the Future Foundation found a way to cure the Thing for one whole week once a year. The Thing was more than happy to take the cure, but was a little saddened that it would only last such a brief time. Thus, the Thing saved it for a rainy day. Until his head started growing like this. This is the disturbing consequence I was talking about a second ago. See, this started happening because there was too much cosmic energy within Ben Grimm, which had no way of releasing because he couldn't turn off his powers. And after years and years of remaining in the same form, it was like his body were a balloon overflowing with air waiting to be popped at any given moment. So after thinking about it, he finally decided to take the cure with the Human Torch by his side. Moments after taking the cure, a grueling transformation would occur with the thing screaming out in pain until he'd revert to human form. <sighs> Oh no! What? What? It didn't work? Oh god, no. Ben, it's even worse. No! They said- Oh. You motherfucker! <laughs> you should have seen your face. <laughs> Do you know how- It felt like my heart was in my throat. You saw me, no good little shit. Calm down and wait a minute. You calm down, asshole. Hey, look in the mirror again. So, you're not gonna start crying or anything, are you? If you're gonna be a jerk, just leave, Johnny. I'm not saying you shouldn't be happy. I'm saying maybe you should look at this in a more opportunistic fashion. What are you talking about? Instead of getting all weepy, we should go out and do all the things you haven't been able to do for a really long time. Two guys out on the town. How's that sound? Pretty good, actually. Excellent. Give me a couple minutes to make some phone calls, and then you and I are going to make up for a lot of missed opportunities. Get ready, Ben. This is going to be the best day you've ever had in a very long time. Walking through the streets of New York where the thing would either be shunned or adored, Ben felt so happy to walk the streets as an ordinary man again. A couple hours later, he could again enjoy a football game without the worry of crushing the bleachers, root for the Eagles, and scoff down hot dogs to his heart's content. Next, Ben and Johnny would have an early dinner with some of their old friends, which happened to be Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, their creators. After that, Ben hosted his poker game night with tons of good friends who finally got to meet the thing as just the average, ordinary Ben Grimm. And once the day was finally coming to an end, Ben would turn to Johnny and thank him for giving the best day he could possibly have. But that was until the new Yancey Street Gang quickly shifted the tone by demanding money from the two of them for an opportunity of a lifetime kind of investment. Johnny turns to Ben confused because this isn't the same Yancey street gang he remembers, to which Ben tells him that after the recession, the real gang got broomed out of town and was replaced by failed Wall Street traders and failed hedge fund managers. One of the Wall Street thugs interrupts the two of them and basically says that if they don't pay up, they'll restructure both of their faces. And since Ben hasn't hit a normal guy in the face since getting his powers and really doesn't see the situation playing out any other way, he socks the guy in the face yelling that he wants his 401k back. So about a half an hour later, after the two of them dogged in the new Yancey street gang feeling on top of the world, Johnny turns to Ben telling him that they have one more stop left before the night ends. Hopping in the car, they both drive through New York, and Johnny asks Ben now that he can be human for a week once a year, if Ben thinks that it'll be a good thing or a bad thing. Ben says that he's missed out on a ton of things, and being able to be human again for a week once a year means he won't ever take it for granted, and he'll appreciate everything he gets. After which they both arrive at their destination, and Ben Grimm is a little apprehensive about going, but Johnny tells him to shut up and go. Yes, who is it? It's me. Can I come up? Hey. Hello, Ben. Hey. Is something wrong? Why do you sound... Oh. Oh my. You're... Is that really you? It's me, Alicia. Good for you, Ben. 
I really love this story after reading it a bit ago, and you genuinely gotta love Johnny, man. He goes out of his way to make sure that Ben has an amazing time with what little time Ben has to be human. Taking him around the city to do all the things he really couldn't do like he could being the thing is something special. Johnny Storm's a dub of a human being, and just seeing Ben smiling from ear to ear in pure joy is a sight for sore eyes. Because the thing half the time is just miserable because sometimes people just judge a book by its cover and think of him as a monster. So this story feels well deserved for Ben Grimm. And the way that Jonathan Hickman writes the FF is always outstanding. On top of the art perfectly illustrating Ben's happiness throughout the story, it's all just perfect. All in all, it's a really good story about The Thing, and I just wanted to tell you all about it because The Thing is easily an S-tier character for me, and I just like to share The Thing stories because The Thing stories are fucking awesome. So we hope you all like this video, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you all on the flip side.